OK, car buying advice for every budget in every category as quickly as possible. Here we go. OK, let's start with the city cars, the small cars, OK? The Hyundai i10. Now, Hyundai are making some great cars at the moment. Sadly, this is not one of them. This is the Renault Twingo engine in the back for some reason. The most annoying traction control ever fitted to a road car. And this one's in a sort of light shade of gonorrhea. This is the Toyota iGo, built to a cost. That's why it feels so terribly cheap and horrible. And this is the one you should buy. The Volkswagen Up. Cheap, and you get a VW badge, and it's quite a good car. Moving on. Super Minis. So these are slightly bigger than city cars. We have a Volkswagen Polo, a Mini, a Corsa, and a Fiesta. Come back here. Don't go over there. Come back over here. Yes, 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 yes. The Polo, people think it's a Mini Golf, but it's not. It's not quite as good. It's a bit dull and boring. The Mini, well, it's got that slightly weird German pretending to be British thing. Like seeing a German man wearing a barber jacket. It's just wrong, isn't it? The Corsa used to be terrible. It's less terrible now, but it's still not the one to buy, because the one to buy is the Ford Fiesta. It's been the best-selling car in the UK for yonks, and there's a good reason for that. It's brilliant. OK, small SUVs. <laughs> this is the VW Tiguan. I think that's called a Mokka, made by Vauxhall. I think that's called the Cougar, made by Ford. And that's the Nissan Qashqai, made in the UK and a very worthy vehicle. I wouldn't have any of them, because they're all complete <laughs> boxes. I'd have a Golf. Where's the Golf? Ah, here's the Golf. Right, so you can forget about all this stuff, forget about all those SUVs and forget these hatchbacks. Just buy a Golf. It does a better job than all of these cars put together. Golf. 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 Moving on. Small executive cars. Now, the rule book says that the BMW 3 Series is the one that you want to drive. The Audi is the one that you want to sit inside because it's beautifully built. The Alfa Romeo is the one that you want to display just how crazy and different you are from every other executive in the car park. But the one you want is the Mercedes C-Class, because it just says nice things about you. And it's a great car to be in. It rides well, and the new diesel engines are great. So buy a C-Class. Moving on. These are the large SUVs, the more hateful end of the car-owning spectrum, let's say. This is the new Land Rover Discovery 5, and I think you know my opinion on the styling of this car. It looks terrible. Very, very capable. But ask yourself this, could you be seen in this thing? It's terrible. The Volvo XC90, massive, very competent. This here is a Hyundai Santa Fe. You can buy a Hyundai for £40,000. Would you want to? No. This is the BMW X5, which looks a bit sort of police car-y to me, and it's not as good as the last X5, so come back here. The one you want is the Volvo XC90. Volvo is on a roll at the moment, and I think the engine mounts in this one are better than the one that I had in the XC60. Right, over here. This, well, these are the ones you want. Forget large SUVs, they're tasteless. What you should have is a classic estate car, right? This is the Volvo V90, a great big lump of Swedish loveliness, but the engines they're a bit mean. You can't buy a big, powerful turbocharged six-cylinder one yet, so I think that has to be discounted. The Jaguar XF, just not quite at the races at the moment, sadly. So it's between these two. Traditionally, it's always been, do you buy an E-Class or a 5 Series? I don't want to confuse you, because the other week, I said I'd rather have a Mercedes E63 over an M5. But in the ordinary area, when you're down in the diesels and the normal petrol engines, I'd probably have a 5 Series. So there you go. Fast reviews done. You now know which car to buy. Can we go and drive some more supercars now?